lads and lassies, gather around. We have our video toaster presentation by Matt Brewster of the Southern California Common Air and Amiga Network again. So this time, the equipment's working. Well, except for the video camera, but everything else is working. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing I'll start was a little bit of background. Uh, New Tech started with the uh, DigiView product. That was a little uh, friend grabber that plugged into the parallel port of your uh, Amiga. Um, they used a color wheel to get the R RGB to do the uh, uh, to get a color image because it was just a black and white uh, uh, digitizer. So it had to take three images and combine all the pixels into a uh, back and door color image. Um, while they were uh, selling that product, they were uh, it raised money to be able to build their next product, which was the uh, video toaster product, which is a very um, complex little board. Um, it's basically a four input video switcher, and it has two 24-bit uh, uh, video outputs, digital frame stores. Um, and one of the things it could do is uh, transitions between uh, video sources, so you can do um, more than just crossfades, it can do uh, a warping of the video, it can bounce video around, it can, uh, there's one with a puzzle piece, which I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute. Um, it also has a uh, luma keyer, so you can do uh, king over somebody over uh, a solid colored background. Uh, it's not a chroma keyer, but a luma keyer. Um, there, there was an add-on that you could get that would convert it over so that you could do a proper chrome key with uh, the video toaster. Um, it also does uh, the title scrolling and, um, and overlays. Um, so this is the um, newest version of the software, the 4.2, uh, that's available uh, online. You can download it. It comes as a uh, CD-ROM and um, uh, with an ADF floppy disk for the installation. Um, this uh, this software is designed for the Video Flyer product along with the Video Toaster, but you can use it just with the Video Toaster. Uh, so with just the Video Toaster, the other versions of the software uh, were just the, the switcher part that you see here, and it had the transitions up above. The toaster. So the new version, you can build and drop up all the things you need, like all the frame stores that you're going to use and all the uh, toaster CG and you build all that so you can do your uh, live uh, uh, video. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and start loading stuff up. So I'm going to change the view to uh, project with files so that I can go to here and start pulling up uh, some, well, I'll start with some frame stores. I'll go into the lightweight frame stores and I'll pull up some of these and I'll pull this one out. Project, um, chest, hammer, uh, 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 toaster, image. Uh, these are all uh, stuff that was rendered in their lightweight program, which was, I think, originally wasn't it? Uh, uh, was it Vista Escape 3D? Or which one was? I, for, I forget which one they purchased. They really needed lightweight and developed. Uh, when you or Video Escape 3D, I think, is what it was. Called. When you say frame stores, what does that mean? Uh, frame store is just a, uh, a still image uh, that was, uh, it's formatted to fit into the frame buffer of the toaster, like here all over the There's a, and it's just a, um, a, just a digital still image. Uh, the frame store format is a uh, format that's specifically for outputting to NTSC, so it does limit the colors a little bit. Um, so that it's represented a little better at this filtering, so there's less fringing like on the reds and stuff, because NTSC is terrible with a lot of intense reds, for example. And it's formatted to load into the, one of the two frame buffers uh, very quickly. Um, so now that I've got some of these loaded up here, I can get some uh, transitions that I can pull up. Uh, and then we have uh, various selections of different visual effects that we can do. There's animals, blinds, border, there's shapes and soft edges and special. Um, some themed ones like sports, weddings, and, and some overlays which are fun, like there's a film overlay. So, so I can make that look like film. 
with uh, some of the scratches and dropouts, and that's just the way it works. That'll work not just on the digital frame buffers, but on live video as well coming in. And if you had a flyer, you can throw it over a uh, flyer video. Okay, and that, which one is your preview monitor? Okay, which one is your preview monitor, and which is the one going out to the public? Oh, okay, yeah, there's, uh, the toaster has uh, two video outputs. Uh, one is a, the, the program output, which is the main output that you're going to send out to your VCR for live to the TV. Uh, the other one's a preview monitor, so you can start loading um, some of the frame stores and other, other graphics and other stuff, and you can see it on the screen before you switch to it. It's also set up, uh, let me go back into project switcher so you can see how it's laid right out. It's got the main out, which you can see me uh, changing it to different inputs, which nothing's plugged in, so that's why it's black. And then here's the digital frame stores. You can see B1 and B2. It also has this background, which usually is set to black. And you can say, up with snow, or you can do magenta, or you can, if you want to do a solid color, uh, I'll do snow. And then you can cross fade between the two. Like here, it's just mixed together. Yeah, I think I love another uh, frame store or something. That's what I'm screaming on that. I'm trying to remember what you can do. Yeah, just cut that little section of it. Oh, okay. Okay, so let me, let me build this up a little more. Let me add a few more things. Uh, go back into the files. And let me get some effects uh, thrown up here. Um, I'll get like some page fields. some of the ones that are some of my favorites because it can manipulate the video. Uh, like here's uh, tubes. Uh, I double click on it and uh, play it and you can see it through the tubes in the office room. Uh, okay. So I can do the, can do the ACES uh, uh -huh. board. So I can I can preview these as as I'm building the project. <laughs> Page fields and Let me load the puzzle. And there's uh, a few more I can scroll down and we'll see these world ones. Um, there were two uh, video toasters. There's the video toaster regular one and there's the video toaster 4000. And if, uh, it's geared towards like if you had the video toaster 4000 and the Amiga 4000, some of the visual effects are a little expanded because it uses the uh, Amiga's hand eight mode. Uh, combined with some of the transitions, so there's some ones that are more animated if you have a video tester 4000 as opposed to a video tester 2000. So this one's the video tester 2000, so it has all the original effects and not the expanded ones that you see in the video tester 4000. But it still has uh, some really neat effects either way, whether you have a video tester 2000 or a video tester 4000. So share some of the other facts that come out as the world is going to be. Go on or go off. Uh, this one's a, one of the bigger transitions. It takes a moment to load. Uh, you see it's a long, very long transition. So then I can go back into program switcher now that I've got these. Uh, a single click will load them up. You see the, these lines appear that shows up. 
So I can say, yeah, load this into the preview and see it loading while it's on the map. And then we can do the uh, transition from from the preview, uh, from this uh, DB2 to DB1. So we'll go from that, and then we'll switch, we'll switch back over and switch to DB2. As in switch from the, the main, to the, from the preview to the main. So since this is set up as the, the flyer, if, I, if uh, there was a flyer in here, we could put video clips up here that you could also queue up, uh, pre-record and stuff. Like if you have an, uh, a video intro of a TV show or whatever, and you the video could, flyer you that on there. And the video flyer was a separate board, yes? Yeah, it's a separate board that interfaces to the video toaster and has a, uh, a separate line that jumpers all the video uh, signals over to the uh, flyer. And the flyer has its... Uh, uh, three channels, recorder, three SCSI chains. Um, it also does a, two video playbacks at once through the uh, video decoder so that it can match with the this transition between uh, preview and program. But it does it with the uh, pre recorded video. Uh, and it'll just route it into these uh, channels as needed. So you can do live with pre recorded video tester footage on the flyer along with the digital frame stores. Um, and the other thing it does is, of course, with the flyer, you've got full 16-bit audio. Um, they designed their own video codec. Uh, I think it's called VTAS. And it's kind of like, the closest thing is it kind of looks like Laserdisc. Because uh, as you lower the bit rate, instead of getting digital or blocky like what you see with uh, MPEG video, where you get all this weird digital noise, it just gets noisy like laser does stuff, so it kind of mimics analog, um, which gives you really good video quality, and it's not objectionable if you turn the video uh, bit rate down. It's, it just gets a little noisy as opposed to pixelated. Uh, the video flyer allows for non-linear, non-linear Yes, non-linear editing, yeah. Which, uh, this software uh, uh, supports all that with, uh, you put it in a sequence. So like right here, I set it up for um, uh, using it with the switcher for, for live stuff. So I put up all the transitions that I want to use that's preloaded. Because when you're doing a uh, live presentation, you want to be able to look to things really quickly, as opposed to looking for things on the hard drive, having to go to the facts and then scroll through the different folders to find the desired effect. Get everything preloaded. You can also, once things are preloaded, you can save this. Like, I can save this right now. Mm -hmm. So that if I want to load up this sequence again, with all these transitions and frame stores, I can just call it up and it will pull it up and put it in. The other mode I can go into, uh, go back to the other mode, I can remove all those. When you're talking about switching, uh, do you mean an external switcher or is there a switcher oh, yeah. the video yeah. test? The toaster is a switcher, okay. a video switcher. So it'll open really up so you can switch between different uh, camera positions? Yes, you can have up to four uh, inputs on the back so you can have four cameras for it. Okay. Uh, you do need a QVC, which I bought one. Because they all have to be scanning at the same time, all the cameras. In order to do the transition, if they're scanning at different times, you get a weird jump. So that's why the TBCs were required. They held it in a frame buffer so they'd all scan at the same time to do the transition. Um, and you can do up to four, so you can have four cameras going at once. And they can just do a quick uh, switch between one camera and another camera. You see here, I can just click on it and switch. Uh, we don't have anything plugged in right now, so we can use it on flat. But uh, with, the, with the DB, we can see that. You can see me switching right here between one and two. And then I could set up like where I'm going to go. Uh, like I could say, uh, I'm on one right now, and I want to go on two, and I'm going to do a crossfade and just pull the ball down. So I can do a crossfade between two. And now two is on the main because it's outputting. And then it put the uh, other one on the preview, which I'm going to switch out to the back do the slide. Set it to the one again. Transition back to the one. 
Um, we could also have the frame grabber. I didn't want really to talk about that. Uh, if I had uh, a video plugged in, I can actually take a still right off the video and be able to save it. Which is this area of the car. And then, of course, here's the, uh, the key area is located. Let me go back into uh, the project files. Yeah. And I'll, I'll set up a sequence which works the same way if you don't have a flyer, but it also works if you, if you don't have to do that. Its own presentation will play on its own, mm. and it goes through like if you edited a video and had the opening presentation and then switch to uh, video clips of an event, and then had overlays with people's names, all pre-set up if you were doing uh, the nominee. But you can set that up even if you don't have a flyer. You can set up the toaster to do that stuff that just doesn't do the uh, pre-recorded video. So I'll, sh I'll show that one. Right. Let so me move these out of the project. And I'll go back into the frame stores and I'll, I'll build this uh, quick little uh, sequence together. I'm going to lightweight and I'll start pulling up some of these. Well, it's all things going to end up in your car. Well, well, uh, yes, it's yes. random. It's kind of whole things up. That's a, I'll just do a quick short sequence. And then I'll go into um, effects, and then I can start doing um, effects between the two uh, frame stores. So I'll say this is put it in between. I can go in do a page peel between these two. I'll just keep walking the video. I'll do this one. back and add something maybe let's see the projector. These are fun too because these uh flip around. Oh hold on guys. Can you do some more things? I had a question, is the video toaster grayscale or is that just black and white? Um I had to plug into the uh, mono port on the A uh, A two thousand because uh, when you engage the Genlock on VJ monitors they have trouble syncing to it. Um, it causes them to kind of go crazy. That's why this monitor went out. Uh, there's a device called the sync unit, which I have over there, that puts a new sync signal on it so that the Genlock doesn't freak out the monitor. So it puts out a nice solid sync. Because with uh, the Amiga, when it Genlocks, it can vary its speed to lock to the video. And when it, that little variance that occurs to lock to the video freaks out um, regular VGA models. That's why they came up with the sync trainer that puts a new sync on the, on the signal that's nice and solid and clean that uh, acts like it, the gen lock's not engaged. And then the model will come up normally. So I had to plug into the composite port because the composite port's not going to have that issue and um, plug it into a regular model. But the A2000 only has a mono uh, on the encoder. It's mono only. Doesn't do color like on the 1200 version. But the interface, most of it's black and white anyway. So sometimes you don't notice. Yeah, it's, it's already mostly black and white. Maybe because it's an interlace, and it kind of shapes and it kind of pick the colors so that it will drive you crazy. Um, the sync strainer is another board that you install, or is it an external device? It, it's just like, because uh, Commodore had those two, it's a 23 pin to the 15 pin VGA yes. that fits in the RGB port. Oh. Um, the sync strainer fits the same way. Okay. And it just has extra circuitry in there to provide a new sync signal so that uh, so the monitor can lock to it. Um, let me pull in another. So now I have a sequence together. I could, uh, I could play the sequence out of the play button, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to preload some things. And then it says, see how the project's ready to play. So I hit play, and it'll just go through. And you'll see it start loading stuff uh, into the preview, and then do a transition. And then it'll load the next frame store, and then it'll do a transition. So you can set this up if you wanted to do a display or something in this tab things running. You can even switch to a camera. You don't have people walk by and see themselves. Why? 
doing transitions to frame stores and other other people. And you can have it all running on its own. Just kind of autonomously if you want. This is kind of like nice because you can do like a little uh, slideshow uh, between the between the two and it just runs. So that it'll run through everything that I put on it. And now it's free. So I can also, if I want to start from, say this one, I can say play from, which is right here. This little square of the play, so I can start from there. So if I don't have to watch it from the beginning every single time. Um, and like I said, if you had a uh, video flyer, you could add video clips in here. They right? could be cued right off the hard drive. Um, you can also change, which I didn't show you this yet, I'm not sure right now. You can change the duration that this still is up. There's a uh, control. And you can see that the length is set for eight seconds. So it's going to stay up for eight seconds in the transition. So I can lengthen that. I can say, I can make it uh, much longer. I can say, stay up there for 30 seconds if you want. And then the next one, I can say, stay up for 10 seconds. And I can go through each one. There's also controls for the transitions. There's the speed, like this one has uh, medium and fast speed. Some of these have, um, you can do the slow is enabled. Uh, not all of them can do uh, every speed, depending on the transition. Some of them are only built for certain speeds. So, so I could change the speed of this one to say medium, so it takes a little longer for it to occur. Uh, same with these other controls. Oh, this one only has fast. That one only has fast. Check this one too. Yeah, this one has all the speeds. The slow, medium, the fast, or the variable, which is, you can set it over here. To be a little more specific. So you can say, instead of 15, I can say like 12, I think, or 17, some weird number. If you want to be real specific. Yeah, there's different view modes, like, um, I can go through that real quick. Like, I can do files, files, so I can transfer something off of, uh, uh, internally without having to go to the Amiga side, and transfer, like, say I worked on a um, image and image effects or something, or on another uh, painting program or, or uh, image editor, I could bring it in. Um, through here, through files, files, instead of having to go to the Amiga side and go into Workbench and have to do it manually there, you can do it right here from the Flyer interface because I can navigate all the hard drives, like here's the, see if you the hard drive, the band disk, and then of course there's some stuff for the, uh, if there was a Flyer. So I can, I can navigate through the hard drive, for example, pull files up. This thing also has, uh, which is kind of nice, has A-Rex. So some of the functionality of uh, when you're in the switcher, uh, you can script some of this stuff. So like if you want it to loop at the end, you can write a script to say when you end, go ahead and loop back to the beginning and start playing. Right? And other things too, like you can take control of uh, some of the uh, video transitions and, and stuff it would be more specific. You could also communicate with uh, other applications on the Amiga if you wanted to that you could put up into the sequence. So, so when I'm in um, project files, switcher, and I could pull these scripts up and drop them and deposit them up here and it'll run an AREC script when it comes to this point in the video sequence. Do you know what those uh, scripts are right there? Um, I have not played with these in a while, and I'm not as familiar with uh, exactly what they do. Um, uh, I'd have to go through and see what they do. I see the names of them, but I'm not sure exactly. Uh, the ones that it comes with, I'm not exactly sure. It's been a while since I've used them. And when you when you say script, uh, that is a pre-planned list of 
Rex or what do you mean that? Yeah, AREX was a uh, interprocess communication language that came out, I think, in 1987 for the Amiga. Uh, it was uh, designed so that programs can communicate with each other. Um, so that one program, while it's running, can communicate with another program and you can script stuff so you can create uh, one program that was designed by one company to communicate with another program designed by another completely different company. And you can access all the commands, like uh, Image Effects, for example, has a lot of AREX. So you can get the toaster uh, software to communicate with Image Effects if you wanted to. Like if you wanted it to add an effect or do a, something from Image Effects, you could actually tell it to load this, do an effect on it and save it back out as a toaster frame story. You can do that automatically. So you can use it like a, a what we call macros in the you, you know overall in the computer world we call them macros. But the Amiga was a little more powerful because you communicate across different applications made by third parties. So because uh, you'll notice like on the on the PC like uh, uh, you can commu uh, communicate between Word and Excel and PowerPoint, but you can't go beyond that and talk to Adobe products. You can't talk to Photoshop. You can't talk to that. The Amiga could talk to the different applications made by different companies as long as they had an AREX port available. So it's kind of nice to have that functionality on here. Like uh, this machine has a PAR in it. I don't think it's set up yet. But the PAR has a AREX port. So I could probably write a script to tell it to play a video clip off of the PAR. By the part you mean uh, personal animation? The personal recording. animation recorder made by digital processing systems, which is a completely different product separate from a new text product. But it could be set up to communicate with it. Um, so you could pull up video clips and do intro sequences and other things, just like you would normally with the flyer, but you could talk to the car, for example. Um, going back to the, the toaster directory, uh, Um, the toaster came, also came with, uh, besides this live capability, it came with uh, several applications. Um, Lightweight being the main one that most people um, were using with the toaster, because you can do a lot with uh, Lightweight. It's the uh, 3D program made by New Tech. Uh, still used today. Every, you'll go to watch movies, a lot of the visual effects, a lot of companies are still using. And it's still available in new versions of it. Um, it's a really great application to get into. I've, I've done a lot of lightweight stuff. It's, it's what would you program. call lightweight? Would it be like an art program or? What yeah, it's it basically it does everything in 3D. Oh. So you can create uh, uh, like you load the 3D. Like some of these are done in, in like like this scene here, with the tables and the chairs and. The, Everything you see there like, it was modeled in uh, lightweight modeler, and then texture mapped, and then put into a, a 3D scene, and you set the camera to where you want it, and you render it out. And it does uh, has to, it takes a long time to calculate the uh, where each pixel is in the 3D space, but you can create these animations and stills with it. Like this one. Um, yeah, the arms move, and it's an example of how you can bend a shape to animate it. Um, a lot of space stuff, of course. Like you do, it, make a sphere, and you can wrap a texture map around it. Um, these scenes are also available in, in here in the lightweight application. I can go over that. I'll load that in a second because it's kind of a separate tutorial. If I did a lightweight tutorial. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also toaster paint, so you can uh, load uh, these frame stores in, or you can uh, create your own um, frame store of uh, specialized graphics. You know, you can load someone's logo, or if you need the, the Visa logo in the corner, or the client's logo, you could load that in and create a frame store uh, for your little toaster product. Um, there's also so you can. You can like load, load in a, a still logo uh, in Toaster Paint. Mm -hmm. Can you animate it then through Lightweight? Um, well, Toaster Paint is just for the stills. Oh, okay. 
um, you can get the to uh, anything you do in there, you can load it in Lightweight, but you can animate it in Lightweight. But that's where you would use the, the Lightweight application to you know, you fly up to the logo. You can do, it, do things like that. How many colors are programs for well, the, uh, the toaster itself has two 24-bit frame buffers, so it's full 24-bit color. So it's uh, full full bandwidth, full color. 16.8 million. Yeah, 16.8 million color frame buffer. Uh, when it loads on the Amiga side, it does it in whatever mode you got. Uh, if you have an uh, Amiga 2000, it'll do it in 4096, and it, you'll see it in 4096, but it in the background, it's keeping the 24-bit image quality. So when, you, so when you're painting with it, you can kind of use this as a reference in, the, in HAM uh, 6 mode on the A2000 and HAM 8 mode on the A4000. And then you hit output and it'll, it'll shove it out to the frame buffer and you'll see it in the full 24-bit. So, do you have a live like that or do you have to send it? Yeah, you have to send it out. There's a uh, because it has to load into the frame buffer, kind of like what you see here, like see it loading in the frame buffer. It's not live or real time. Right. There was a program called uh, Also Paint that allowed you to paint right on the uh, toaster's uh, frame buffer. What's the, what's the name of that program again? Uh, it's Alpha Paint. Alpha Paint. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you guys remember Alpha Paint. Yeah. And that allowed you to paint directly. Uh, but the one that it comes with is. Uh, an evolution, I think, of DigiPaint. Mm -hmm. I think originally, which uh -huh. they, they had, we were selling that along with uh, DigiBio, and they evolved it to work with the video uh, touch uh, And that's basically just a regular uh, 2D still program uh, that you know, like personal paint or deluxe paint, just without the animation capabilities. It's just strictly a still image paint program. Uh, the other thing is Toaster CG which is the character generator program, so you can do all your text uh, for uh, scrolls and all that. Which is, let me load one of those up there for you. There's some, there's some in here that are pre-loaded. Let me show you uh, how that works. CD. So we've got different ones, uh, crawls, uh, just frames, and scrolls. So let me pull these scrolls up. And the, uh, the Amiga did a lot of uh, stuff in the background. Like for example, when I'm going to pull up these uh, scrolls, it's actually the Amiga doing the scroll, the Amiga's blitter. And it's just sent out through the gem locking interface out to the video. That's why the, I'll lose the, the Amiga interface for a moment. And you'll see the scroll, because the Amiga is actually doing the uh, text scroll. So when you pull up the nose, you double click. And you'll see. <laughs> see how my screen's gone, but it's outputting over there. Because the Amiga is actually doing the scroll, because the Amiga can do perfect video scroll. So you can see it over there. It looks a little better because they can put a drop shot on it. And then you can also do side scrolling. And you can do this all in Toaster CG. You can just keep, keep typing. You say what kind of page you want. It's either a full screen page or you can do a scroll mode. You, you just control keep, the speed also? Yeah, you can control the speed. Like I can make that really slow if I want. So I go in here and I go control. And then there's different speeds. So I'll say speed one. And then I'll, now I'll bring it back up. And now it's going to go really slow. <laughs> so it only has certain speeds because of uh, to keep it clean. You know, because certain speeds you can't do because of the way it's scanning at right. 30 frames per second. This is <laughs> you can import all kinds, any kind of fonts in there, or just certain fonts? Yeah, it's like Toaster CG. It, um, you can go in there and it's got uh, a bunch of fonts that you can preload. Um, and then um, you can load in text files, so if you have stuff that has been pre-typed, like credits or whatever, you can go ahead and just load the text file in and then format it in there with the, with the font you want. And then uh, I could load that up. Let me go into the text. Mm -hmm. That's good to do the 
So you can see I have the, the it shows me where the title safe is on the box. And then I could, uh, I have a cursor so I can start uh, typing. Click on it. I can make changes to it. Um, I can put an outline and you know, drop shadow on it. Is it center in the middle or is it over the bottom? And then if I want to see what this looks like, yeah, I hit this outfit button and it's going to send it out to the frame buffer. And then I hit the clapper board and then it will show up. Um, you can also put gradients on that title and that can also enlarge it. Sizes. Control menu, and I can add another font, like when you go into the fonts. This is the software. I'll just pick one. And it'll ask me to pick the size, so right now it's set to 40. I'll, just, I'll make it big so you can use this at 120. So it should make it much bigger. So pull that up. Under the, so now it's a big. big image. And I can double click on it. Pick it up and move it around. Let me say, uh, put it right here. And then I can also load other things in here, like I could load some brushes. Um, so I can run a plus brush. Uh, I'll just one, uh, a solar image. And then I pull it up here. Solar image. And there's this one. And it's showing me like a preview representation of it. And when I output it, it's going to continue. When I output it, it'll show the actual image. So now I'm sending it up. How many layers can you fit over a video? There's a text layer, the graphics layer, or they're all one layer? It's all one layer. One layer. But you can set the priority um, if okay. it's behind Find something that. or, or, or in front. Like the top of one and then you output it. Uh, you could also do uh, gradient filters. You might be able to just it's like here's the priority. Like it's in front of the hand. Or I'll say the hand. Or you can only move the hand. See, I said it's behind. I'm not going to say it's both in front. I'll have to try it. What it looks like. I think that's the priority. But gotta send them out. And the more stuff on here, the longer it takes to send it out. See, it's behind it right now. And I'm sure. I think, and I, think I, I think that was the priority. Yeah. <coughs> It's been a while since I've used this program. Um, I can also save this page and pull it up and switch it right here. But you can see, like, here's the load text. Um, right now, I'm on the single page. You can change this to a scrolling page that goes up and down from side and just scrolls across. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of functions in here. It's been a while since I've used this, so I feel like I've been kind of I haven't been in touch with CP. Here, I'll go back to the switcher real quick. Uh, let me show you toaster paint. So I'll go to toaster paint. If this was plugged into a regular monitor, this would be <laughs> Right now, I'm just plugged into the monitor, so that's why I'm on. I can go ahead and just paint stuff. And it's the same thing. Yeah. I can go ahead and output it. You can see it loading, loading into the frame buffer. And it's the same thing. You can load in uh, uh, brushes and stuff and objects and put them down any way you want. There's also flood fills and I believe that this is directly installed now. Yeah. Or you got to purchase 
these, these, come, these all come with it. This is the default setup. Uh, you'll get LightWave, uh, Toaster Paint, Toaster CG, and Chroma effects, uh, along with, of course, the, the switching program and all the transitions that you saw. It also had some uh, bundled third-party products, which are also on here. Um, that was originally made back in the day, and I just included that. Um, some scripting stuff for the editing sequences and stuff. Like, I think they even render effects which will pre-render stuff, if you're doing fire stuff. It'll combine certain things so that it can load in time, like for transitions and stuff. Because some of the transitions take a moment to load, and you can't put them too close together on the timing, because it won't have enough time to load. But with render effects, you can say, go ahead and, and uh, do the transition, and it records to itself and makes a video clip. And then it puts a video clip in there instead, which is easier to pull out. So that fixed one of the issues. You can also unload programs by holding the shift. And you'll see there's a little dot. It says that the program's loaded. So if you um, get low on memory, you can unload it by holding that shift and clicking on it, and it'll unload it. It's dots. Kind of so, something to know in case you don't have a lot of RAM. Uh, you don't want to have all that stuff in the game. Let me go into Chroma Effects real quick. And then Chroma FX was an interesting program because you can tint the video like with a gradient and you can do like stuff where it's solarized. And you probably may have seen some of the demo tapes that Newtech put out. They showed the Chroma FX with it solarizing and bursting and color cycling the video where it's changing some of the video. So it's like this, you know, like bright oranges and blues and stuff and all that. And you can do, you can set that up through here and load pre made effects. There's a whole bunch already set in here. Um, yeah, there. It's been a while since I've been here. See, there's different ones. Two uh, bands, Mars filter, CPU uh, tone. So I just saw the CPU tone. Right now, it's trying to do it over live video, which we don't have a video source right now, that's why we don't see it. Uh, but if there was a video source, we would see it happening in real time. Maybe it'll do it over the print mode, I'm not sure. But I think we could do it through that too. I could probably show you from the switch interface. I could probably show you from the press. Uh, These are the project files back in the new tech, and I think there's a folder for it. Um, let's see. Or not. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, it's been a while since I've done anything. I'm not sure what's in there. I remember there being some, uh, some preloaded things for the I'm not sure where it is right now. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure that. Only because it's been a while since I've been playing. Um, you want to see Lightweight real quick? I can show you that. Sure. Let me unload Chroma FX. Because Lightweight is going to have to do that. Robert, the uh, Lightweight and the Babylon 5 software. Oh, there's the Chroma FX. Right? Yeah, Babylon 5 was done in uh, Lightweight. There were some other other things too, I think. Uh, is it uh, Sequest DSV? I think it was the other one from Amblin. Uh, yeah, it was out of time. Yeah. I'm trying to think of all the things that were yeah. um, Let me load a scene real quick. Uh, space. Here's the Blade Runner scene. This is one of the frame stores I pulled up, the Blade Runner where it's going past the sign. So it's loading in all the objects and the texture maps. It'll take a moment. Load all the, all the assets into the
shows you in, in this field of the blocks. And then, uh, there's the, like, it, it's animated, so you can see it moving, it's like frame advance. And then I let go and it'll show me the polygon. So if I was to render this, I think it's F1. And it starts rendering. And it takes a moment uh, because it is a, uh, is it an 060, right? It's an 060. It's an 060, so it shouldn't be too bad, but it's not as fast as the latest system that you're rendering. Uh, like on a, uh, yeah, like on, a, on, a, on a, an Intel or... Well, I thought you meant the latest system, like uh, video toaster with a vampire. Oh, yeah, it would definitely render you faster on that. But, I, mean, I mean, generally, the people who are using Very Lightwave good. today are using it on, uh, generally on the Intel platform. You can see it start to render. This is going to take a while, so I'm going to You can set it so that when it's done with the frame, it'll output to the frame buffer. So you can see what it looks like in terms of it on the screen. Let me load a simpler scene. Uh, let me do some uh, screen um, This one is just uh, ships flying through space. Mostly space. Mm -hmm. It's going to render is oh. the, the planet and the ship. Uh, yeah. 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 Kind of nice. Scene. On these uh, fully animated scenes, you can render all the frames you wanted to. Uh, you had a par in here, so we could actually, we just hooked up, we would save it directly to the par and we would build it on the part we'll be able to play it back and see what it's all done. But right now I think it's set to just output to the to the frame buffer on the audio test. So it's almost done. Yeah, it wasn't set I think now. The way to set that is how to output over there. I can see all the buttons out here. Render to select it. So you can say video toaster, or you can say a ham, six or eight bit, or the cost of two. So if I had it set to video toaster, it would send out, yeah, which I won't render it again, but it would, it would end up, when it was completed, it would upload it to the print buffer. Um, you could also do a preview of this and see it. Oh, you're very welcome. Yay, hey, 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 welcome, Robert. I can say a little bit preview. You can say wireframe, but it takes a little longer to do. But you can see what the animated sequence is going to do. It's going to be ship flying along and rotating. The process of this map, uh, you would build what, one frame at a time? Is that what you would do? Or? Well, in one way, what you do is you set two frames. Oh, so basically, where things change. So. So if you had uh, this camera movement, for example, uh, it's probably only got two, maybe three key frames. You would tell it to start here, uh -huh. and then you would set your next key here in the middle, and then you would set the next key looking at the planet. Oh, okay. And then it, it, you set frames in between, like you say, frame zero here, frame 15 here, and frame 30 here, and then it figures out where to move the camera in between. So you don't have to set that many keyframes. You don't have to do each frame. Mm -hmm. You just do where the changes are. And then it figures out from that. Yeah, the keyframing. So 
like if I move that around. See, there's keyframes down here, like key, create key, delete key, and then you just have to go back to the previous key. So if I remember correctly, yeah, I have to remember how to move around. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a keyframe here that's like spot controls. So yeah, next key right there. So on the space fire that's highlighted, you can see the path here. So uh -huh. and you can see this little dot is the next keyframe. So right now I'm at frame zero. And then I can jump to the next uh, keyframe would be at 100. Like I say, go to the next keyframe after that, it's at 200. So, so there's a keyframe at zero, which I say start here. And then on frame 100, I want you to be there. And then frame 200, I want you to be there. So on frame 100, say I want to move this. I just take him and I put it in and I say, I want you right here instead. And then I hit return twice, selected item. Now it's changed to this keyframe. Now he's going to move over there instead. So you can see as it's figuring out where the path is, he's going to go way, swing way out instead of way in. So on this keyframe, I can like change it again. It doesn't look like he's going out of control. And then I could go ahead and hit the turn. I say, go ahead and create a team on the selected item. And then you'll see the path is changed. And you see, as I scroll through, you can see his path also. So animating a lightweight is, is pretty easy. Um, usually it's the model getting the models right. You'll spend a lot more time in that. animating them and moving them around. Uh, it's pretty. And, it's pretty quick. And so you do the models within Lightweight. Yes. There's a, another program called Modeler. Here, it's hard to see. It's cut off. Yeah. And here's the Modeler, which is a separate program. Okay. Um, basically, it shows. This is the, the final view. It's in 3D. This is the top view and the front view and the side view. And basically, how this works is. is you took this image and you tilted it down, and then you took this image and turned it inward from flat inward, which can show you where the image is in the space. And then this shows you, you can go ahead and rotate it here. Uh, let me load it now. So I can, sh I can show you. I gotta find the uh, lightweight item. I'll load up, uh, maybe I'll load up the streets by now. I think he's in space. So you can see here's the top view, and here's the front view, and the side view. And then uh, this will show you the main view, but I can't turn it on because I can't see it. Because you can rotate the, the object even it's view, but I can't turn on because I can't quite see it's up here. Uh, I can see the layers. Like I can have the ship loaded and then I can have another object loaded up here and I can combine it in case I'm working on stuff. I don't have a toaster, so I'm going to be used on so Would you say Amiga Vision is like a bottom of the barrel version of the toaster? Uh, which one? Amiga Vision? Yeah, Amiga Vision is more of a program that competed against Scala, which is more of a like a uh, presentation program, um, but we had some more interact inter as interactivity, um, like Scala did, where you can push buttons and all that, and you can control a laser disc and other other things. But yeah, it's kind of geared towards a different a different functionality. It's it's more like a PowerPoint, where this is more uh, interacting with. And then Lightwave is more just for 3D stuff, which can be purchased separately, just to do the 3D stuff. Yeah. I had a question. If I wanted to make a, like, a retro style sci-fi mini-movie, yeah. can I download 
spaceships? Like, is there yes, a there's a, a online. There's still a bunch of objects okay. that there's are in the lightweight of, uh, format. Did you get? Yeah, that are still available. I think Turbo Squid is one of the websites. Uh, people offer them for free, but they also have sites where they sell objects that are a little higher quality. But yeah, you can still you can still get a bunch of objects that are still. How many objects and chips can you put on the screen at once? I'm it gets to, like, I'm not sure. I think until you run out of memory, there might be a limit, an okay. artificial limit, like a thousand. But I'm not. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not limit. sure if there's a, a polygon limit or there was a vertex limit. <laughs> there was a vertex limit. Yeah, because there was lim a limit, but I wasn't sure what it was. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. It was yeah. something like those 16 million, kind of a 24 bit number. Yeah, yeah you, you, yeah, you kind of had to push it to get to that right. point, yeah. though, but yeah. But yeah, generally, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, see, you can still do that. And, and um, the older versions of Lightweight, I think, are still floating around. if you want the older one. But there's new versions you can just buy from the new tech um, that have a lot of features on it. But, you know, it's locked to just the PC and Mac. They don't. They stop making the new version a while ago. I think version five, I think was, or five point something. I think was the last uh, version before they strictly went with other platforms. But it's still a good program. It has uh, really good quality. And, and uh, a lot of people started with this version of Lightweight, and they're still animating today and doing visual effects in the industry. So. Yeah, the limitation is it's not high def. Yeah, I mean, you could set the resolution, but it's going to take you longer to render out. But uh, I think you can set the, the output quality to high def if you want yeah. to. Yes, I if I remember correctly, yeah. Mm. You can set it, like you can say, yeah, I want to do 1024 by 768 or 1920 by 10. I believe you can. It's not limited to NTSC resolutions. You can set it to, to really high resolutions. It just obviously takes longer the more pixels there are the longer it's going to take to compute each pixel in 3D. Oh, okay. But yeah, I can go back to the... Maybe I'm confusing it with the video, video toaster section when you're switching between the video. Yeah. And live video. Yeah, where is it? It's, there's... Uh, I'll find it. It's in the camera. I could show you real quick. <coughs> I just can't see the control panel. Oh yeah, here's the word. Like, I can say custom. Right here, like... So that's modern day uh, 2K television set resolution 1920 by 1080. Mm -hmm. So you can you can set it for that. I think uh, there might be a internal one that. I've Maybe like 4,000 by 4,000, I don't remember. Or 8,000 by 8,000, I don't remember. If it was uh, but it was generally pretty high. So, so you can set it to HD if you want, and actually render it in here in, in HD and have a file, but you'd have to take it somewhere to, to view it on something else, like an output in HD. Uh, but it is possible. Because a lot of times they would, they would render out the frames and they would render it in higher resolution anyway if you were doing something in film, because you would transcode it onto, onto film. They had uh, uh, screens where they, they would be able to transcode it to uh, film stock uh, back in the day. Now it's all digital, but, but at the time, that's what you had to do. Okay, well, uh, any other questions from anybody uh, on uh, the quick uh, lesson on video toaster and lightwave and toaster painting. There are so many modules to this thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I think there's still uh, videos out that you should go and watch that show you uh, some more detail. Like back in the day, they had tutorial videos that you could purchase. And I think they just put them on YouTube at this, at this point. Okay, on, on the desk there, I brought a video toaster manual, but that's only yes. 2.0. Yes. And it's Which really just it's still one of the best manuals, though. It's, it's, it it really looks cool. Yeah, it's really, I think. The newer ones were this plain gray oh. manual. This one has the nice <laughs> logo with the red. I think so. it's just a bunch of tutorials, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much uh, goes through each one with the introduction. The, 
installation, of course, uh, and there are tutorials. Like here's the toaster, and you know, this is a switcher. Um, obviously, the thing is to walk you through it. So if you had like, well, it's a good place to get started. I think the PDFs are available too. Oh. So if, if you don't have the manual, I think you can find the PDF online. That somebody scanned all the the pages. So uh, you can go through there and actually do a lot with the toaster and follow with the tutorial. So if you had like video toaster four installed, which is what this machine has, you would need a video toaster four manual then to learn about it? Um, oh yeah, yeah, you cover the new features. Yeah, like this one um, covers the older versions of the toaster software, which um, doesn't have the sequence capability. It's uh, the older versions of the toaster software, which I think also is on here, that disk that you installed, hmm. has the older version as well, which is just the, um, the control panels up here with this, and it isn't uh, where you, I can pick different um, assets that I want with the transitions and all that is basically just this up here with the transitions and this down here it didn't have all these different views uh, like project files is not available in the older versions it's covered in here it doesn't have this view where you can move files around and all that so this is uh, something they added in these tabs to uh, uh, flyer stuff those are available but it's, it's nice because you can get this version and you can get the PDF of the, of the new uh, manual that you can go through. This, uh, this version is definitely much better uh, and more flexible and you can do more with it, uh, especially with the sequencing. That's like the big addition in this version of the software, that the previous ones were just a switcher with just the effects. I know during Babylon 5 days, they, they were using a 068030 uh, Motorola with a, at, running at 25 gigahertz. And it was with only 32 gigs of RAM. So yeah. that's what they were using in Babylon 5. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. I'm sorry. Thanks. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. 32. 32 gigs of RAM. And, um, Would you be able to go any lower than that in, in specification or no? Uh, I know yeah. it make everything really, really slow, but... Yeah, you can. Um, there's two versions of Lightweight. There's a floating point and a non-floating point. Oh. So you can run the non-floating point one, which is really slow. <laughs> By the way, if you have a, a pre you know, if you don't have a floating point unit, which is like, I think, if you have... Uh, you know, just a non-floating point system, like if you had a 68,000 or an 010, oh. where you're forced uh -huh. to use the non-floating point version. But, uh, and then, of course, if you had an 020 and above and with a floating point, it, it did make a difference. And there's two versions of the software that you launch. Um, there was a non-floating point and a floating point. So if you have a floating point, definitely load the floating point. Don't load the non-floating point. They won't take advantage. I forget what the vampire is. So the vampire oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it's got some added things, too. But <laughs> not to mention being cranked up uh, insanely fast. Oh, right. For, for, you know, for as Amigas go. <laughs> um, also, uh, kind of a side thing that we're in Vegas. Um, you may have come in like I came in on the freeway. Okay. You'll notice, uh, uh, you'll see the signs for Penn and Teller. Yes. Uh, Penn and Teller was associated with the video toaster when it was out. Oh. Uh, Tim Jennison uh, knew Penn and Teller, and they, they actually did a uh, instructional video kind of advertisement, a little comedic bit, with the video toaster. What? And that video is available online on YouTube, which is a very interesting thing to see Penn and Teller demonstrating the video toaster and how much they loved it. Uh, so that's a great video to watch in case. In case you're curious, it was kind of interesting. I saw Penn and Teller, like, hey, these are media people too. They used to be with us. So, yeah, they were big backers of it. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, Matt. Thank okay. you very much.
short break here because uh, I went a little long. Matt is going to demonstrate next or talk about his mist boxes yeah. that he has sitting over there. Yeah, that'll be much shorter. Sure. <laughs>